Hey, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week we have a really, really cool slow blues. I haven't done a blues this slow, maybe ever. And there's a lot of really cool phrasing that we're going to be uh, covering in this lesson. And I've got it broke down over the course of two videos. So in this video, we'll look at the first half. If you want to watch the entire thing, both parts, and get the tablature and the mp3 jam track so that you can practice everything we're going to learn. You can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP327. Alright, so this week we have a slow blues, and when I say slow, I mean really, really slow. This is like 43 beats a minute slow. I've never done a lesson this slow in terms of a, a tempo, you know, like a slow blues. And actually, when I looked around on YouTube, there's not a lot of them out there. And the reason for that is that they're very difficult to teach. It's difficult to explain the phrasing when you're doing phrasing like this, where you're playing ahead of the beat or behind the beat a little bit, little fast bursts. Uh, and I had a really hard time coming up with the, the, lesson mat the material for this uh, in, a, in a teachable way. You know, a lot of the stuff that I like to do is right on the beat. It makes it easy to tab. It makes it easy to explain. But I think I've done a pretty good job of explaining this. So you're going to walk away from this lesson with a whole new set of licks that you can apply to uh, your playing. And you can play these whether you're playing fast or slow blues. But we're going to do them over this slow 12-bar blues. Uh, 43 beats a minute. This guitar, by the way, this is a, a new one for uh, for me. Uh, this is a Fender Meteora. They're a fairly new uh, product line uh, from Fender. I'm not endorsed by Fender. Fender didn't send me this or anything. Uh, I just went out and bought it. Uh, but it's just a cool, cool guitar, especially if you're interested in a guitar that bends really well. It's like a 12-inch radius on this neck. So this thing for blues, it's killer. Uh, this is made in Mexico. And I think they've done like a really good job of mixing sort of a hip new look with like a vintage look. So that's what these are. They come in like three or four colors. Um, I picked this one up at a guitar center uh, here in Nashville and I couldn't put it down. It was like, I just wanted to try it out. I had no intention of buying it. This happens to me a lot, by the way. But this thing was just perfect. And the guy, when I was checking out, he said, well, we have a brand new one in the box. He said, no, 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 I want that one. Because, you know, sometimes with guitars, you know, there's little nuances between them. But that's what this is. The Fender Meteora, the sound on it is awesome. So let's get into the song. So we got a blues in the key of E. And I'm going to go ahead and play along with a jam track uh, and just play that first phrase. We're going to dissect it. So this is the first thing we're going to learn. All right, so that's the phrase. And remember, we're playing this blues in the key of E. And so the first thing that I'm doing there, this is a Jimmy Vaughn lick. I got this from Jimmy Vaughn, but I'm, I've got my finger down on the third fret second string and I'm doing a hammer on to the fifth fret second string. But while I do that, I'm also plucking the first string. Now I'm using my ring finger and my middle finger on my right hand to pluck strings one and two. I find that easier and it sounds a little more precise. You could use your pick if you wanted. Either way uh, works, but I just find it to be uh, better to, to hybrid pick that part. All right, so there's six of those and it doesn't have to be exact, but that's what I did. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I played that, third fret, second string, along with the open uh, first string. And then there's this phrase that goes. So let me show you how to play it, then I'll explain where this is coming from, but it's a quick slide with my middle finger from the 4th fret 3rd string down to the 2nd fret, open 3rd string, and then watch this. All I'm doing for that is I'm playing strings 2 and 3, I'm using my middle finger to bar those two strings there on the 2nd fret, then 2 and 3 open, and then the 2nd fret 4th string. That's what that last part looks like. So all together, that first phrase sounds like this. Okay? Now we'll play along with the jam track as we go through this so you can get the timing down. Uh, but what is this? Where does it come from? This is just minor pentatonic scale. All of the stuff we're learning in this is the E minor pentatonic scale. So this is just pattern two of the E minor pentatonic scale. And then when I go, I'm going down to pattern one. So pattern one is down there. So we're just playing licks out of pattern two and going down into pattern one. 
Uh, and everything we're going to be playing in this is coming right out of the minor pentatonics. We're not getting into any, anything any more advanced than that. Okay, so that's the first phrase. Let me play along with a jam track, and I'll play the first phrase, and then we'll get into the second phrase. We're going to build up to it. All right, so this phrase is probably the most difficult in this entire thing, just because it's kind of spastic. It's sort of all over the place. And this, to me, has some Eric Clapton. There's some Buddy Guy stuff in there. Uh, I'm always fascinated with players that kind of play ahead of the beat. So you kind of can hear what the, the drum and the bass is doing, but on top of that, you're kind of all over the place, noodling around. I love that sound. And so even though it sounds difficult, the actual technique of it isn't really difficult at all. It's just trying to get the phrasing right so that it ends on that E string, which is right at the beginning of the, the next measure. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's what I like about this the most, is you could just noodle around a little bit. I want you to learn some of this, though. You can pick up a few licks from this. So it starts like this. That's the first thing we're going to do. Open fourth string. And again, we're just in pattern one of the minor pentatonic scale. Open one, second fret, fourth string. Open third, second fret on the third string. You can see that's right in the middle of pattern one, minor pentatonic scale. And then, all I'm doing for that, look at this. I just picked that once. Second fret, third string, slide up to the third fret, back to the second fret, pull off, and then a hammer on to the second fret, fourth string. Sounds difficult, but it's really pretty easy. You could do this on acoustic or electric. You need to know how to do that. These slides, hammer-ons, and pull-offs, because it allows you to play fast things. You don't have to flat pick that stuff. You can just do it with, with your left hand. So if you walk away with nothing else, take this little lick. You've got this little fast lick now you can do in the key of E. It's a really cool little blues lick. Now, if you want to play that in another key, you just transpose it. So if you're playing a G, you play. You just use different fingers for it, but it's the same concept. Okay, so back to E, we have. Now, after I played that, then I went. So once I came down to that second fret fourth string, I let my index, or sorry, my middle finger lay down here so that I can play the second fret third string and back to the 2nd fret 4th string. So it goes like this. 3, 4, down, up with the right hand. Slowly. Alright, now after that. We went open 3rd string, 2nd fret, 4th fret. So I just went from pattern 1 up to pattern 2. Now once I play that, then my index finger goes down on the 3rd fret, 2nd string, and then we're back down to the 2nd fret, 3rd string. So I know this is probably you're pulling your hair out as you're trying to learn this, uh, but just follow along. So we have... Notice this. When I play that, I'm just picking that once, hammer on, slide, and then pick that string. So I'm really not picking this. It sounds fast, but if you watch my right hand, it's doing very minimal work. Now, believe it or not, we've already pretty much learned this entire phrase. Uh, most of what we're going to do from here on out for the rest of this is going to be a repeat of what we've done, with the exception of one note. But um, So let's back it up. We have... Now after this... Look at that. I'm, after I played that third fret, second string, I did the slide from the fourth fret back to the second fret, and then that same thing that we just did. Open third, second fret, fourth string, and then my finger bar is there, second fret, third string, back to the second fret, fourth string. And then we go back up. That's the same again. Uh, third, 
open third string, second fret, fourth fret. And then I played the one string just to give it a variation. Instead of going, I went, and then I slid back down. Second fret, open, second fret, fourth string. Now I know that's a lot of notes, but if you play through it slowly, you can get through it. So just try it at a tempo like. All right, now let's back up. I'm gonna play along with a jam track and we're gonna take those first two phrases and play them along with that, just so you can hear them in context. Now you can see at the end of that second phrase, I came down and I hit the open sixth string. I forgot to mention that, that's kind of important. And I just let that ring out as the phrase kind of moves on. And then we move on to the next part, which is a lot easier to play because it's played right on the beat. So we, we play it like this. Now, to play that, all I'm doing is I'm starting on the second fret, third string with my middle finger, sliding up to the fourth fret, and my index finger goes down on the third fret, second string. We slide back to the second fret, and then play the open uh, third string, and then the second fret, fourth string. So all together that lick goes. Now notice I'm giving it some vibrato there. And that's something that took me a long time to figure out how to do, like two strings. You can use a tremolo if you've got that, or you can, it just depends, I mean, people do this different. Some people lock their wrists uh, down, but I find it easier to just touch nothing on the back of the neck and just let my fingers float there and uh, just kind of do, do it that way. Okay. And then I come back down and hit that open six string again. Let me back up, I'll play us up to that point with the jam drag. So you can see that next lick we're going to learn sounds like this. And all I'm doing is I'm sliding from the second pattern, pattern two, those two notes are in pattern two, all the way up here to pattern four. So that would be um, all played on the second string, and I'm doing it all with my index finger, third fret up to the fifth fret, and then I slide all the way up here to the eighth fret. And I do it all with one pick with the right hand. As long as you've got a decent amount of sustain on your guitar, and it doesn't take much, this is not super heavy, it's just got the right amount of breakup. So, it, as long as I'm playing that vibrato there, it should hold that note. Okay, so after that, then the song goes to the A chord, and I played. That's the next lick we're gonna learn. Now I'm in pattern four of the minor pentatonic scale for E, so that's what that looks like. And so the lick goes ninth fret third string, eighth fret second string, tenth fret second string, little triangle there that you can visualize, and then bend. And then release the bend, but don't play it. So don't go. You just go to the top of the bend, and then you let it go and play. Actually, you're muting with your right hand there. And then I played the 8th fret 2nd string, back to the 10th fret, back to the 9th fret, back to the 8th fret 2nd string. So you can see I'm just tracing those same notes. Just practice that stopping that note from uh, being able to hear the release. It's not the end of the world if you do. That, in fact, that could just be your style.
but I was going for kind of like that Albert King. He would do that quite a bit with that kind of thing. And then we have this fast little run. Now this isn't as difficult as it sounds. Um, so once you see how to play it, you'll see that it's very doable. But it sounds like this. Let me do that again. I'll do it slow. And all we're doing is we're staying in pattern four of that minor pentatonic scale for E. So I'm starting here on the ninth fret third string, playing down to the seventh fret third string. And then I do a slide from the ninth fret fourth string down to the seventh fret fourth string. So it goes. And then watch this. And this should look familiar because we've done the same thing down here. Uh, same, same technique. So after that note, we're going to play the fifth fret fourth string, seventh fret fifth string, bar with my ring finger so that I can play the seventh fret fourth string, and then back to the seventh fret fifth string. So all together we have. Let me do that again. And then I come to the fifth fret fourth string, play that note, and then went to conclude the lick. And that's just a pull off and a hammer on to the ninth fret sixth string. So the pull off is between the ninth fret fifth string and the seventh fret. And then a hammer on. So I only picked that once. So all together, that last phrase goes. All right, so there's a response to that. So you can think of that phrase as a call, and then there's a response phrase. That's kind of a simple way of looking at it. Uh, but the response to that goes. A lot of the same stuff. This is the exact same thing. And a lot of this is what we've done down here. We're just playing it in a different position. I wanted to repurpose some of the licks that we've already learned. So it starts, it's really just a box between the fifth fret and the seventh fret. It starts on the sixth string, hammer on. So I'm just picking that once. We do the same thing on the fifth string. And then we come up to the fourth string. This is on the fifth fret. And then, and then the seventh fret with a slide up and a slide back. So that slide goes up to the eighth fret fourth string and then back to the seventh fret. So you have and then back down to that fifth fret uh, fourth string. So let me put that all together now uh, and play through that, that response phrase. It goes. And then that same little tag, just like we did with the previous phrase. That pull off and a hammer on to the seventh fret sixth string. So we have that second phrase. So once you see how I'm playing it, it's really not that difficult. It's not fast picking uh, with the right hand. It's mostly just pull offs and slides with the left hand. So the final phrase we're going to cover in this part one video, which is super simple, goes like this. And that's just fifth fret, fifth string, and then seventh fret, fifth string. And those two notes are in pattern four of the minor pentatonic scale. That little box down here. We're going to wrap up this part one video here. I will go ahead and play along with the jam track one more time to put all of that in context. And uh, make sure you've checked out premium membership if you haven't. It's very affordable. You have access to the on-screen tab viewer. You can slow it down. You can get very specific about what you're trying to learn. And you have the jam track that you can practice and play all this stuff along with. So I'll play along with the jam track, and then we'll see you in part two. Thank you.